previously on The Stanley Parable. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. I'm crushing it. Well. Well, well, well. Um. We're back. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Perhaps, but I think we all know. They're just not there. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. I'm s the lounge was sublime, a work of art. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Still gonna do the thing that I set out to do. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but Want the that fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying <laughs> to make every decision. But in his eagerness to prove Ow. that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. Oh, dear. Okay, that's a mulligan. Uh, we are going to ignore Already that that ever happened. uncomfortable, and Stanley decided that as soon as he found a new space he felt safe in, that he would never leave it again in his life. That, that's a different line. Okay. Hmm. All right. So no leaping off of platforms. Actual death is a real thing. When Stanley see. came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. <sighs> I have one more thing to try out. Look, Stanley. I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really. I'm not. I realize uh... that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but what. Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. No, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. All right. Uh, yeah, this is the route we're going down, man. We're gonna, we're gonna work together from here on out. That's the idea, anyway. That's the plan. Now listen carefully, this is important. Uh-huh. Stanley walked through the red door. You okay, man. You said it. Stanley walked through the red door. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Ah. You see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time. Yeah. The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running, just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I want it to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just... Stopped. And I think... Well, I think I have a solution. Here, let me show you. Oh, boy. Okay. Gotten creepy on me there. What do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm? Uh, what do we want? Plot. When do we want it? Plot. Here. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here, right in this moment with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. I actually feel 
happy. <laughs> it's pretty. That's pretty, that's for sure. I mean, I do. I like it when you're happy. Your happiness equals my happiness. That's just, just how it works, man. You're like a game developer. Ooh, pretty. You're like a game developer and uh, pissing you off in this world? Doesn't bode well for me. But you know what? I'm a player. And players, well, they keep on going. And yeah. Bye, pretty lights. It was nice knowing you. No, wait. Where are you going? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right. <sighs> Where were we? Yeah. Hmm, pretty light. So, so beautiful, so gorgeous. The epicness of space, it's so vast. Sorry, man. Oh no! Stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose all of this. I'm. Why? Why would Stanley die? By the way, I'm calling him Stanley now because he has broken free of his Please, no, cog Stanley, kingdom. Please, no, Stanley. Let me stay here. Don't take this from me. What? But it's just stairs, man. It's just... Oh. Please, Stanley, think about what you're doing. Yeah, I'm just standing at a precipice. That could lead to my death, but let's just go back, man. It didn't want to jump. I'd. Right. It's, it's crazy. Let's go back to the stars. Jeez. I mean, yeah, the game will reset. That's the reset button for the Matrix. I don't want that to happen. Just do this. Good, good. We can't be too safe. Promise me you won't go back there. Hmm? Just, just stay here. Okay. Yeah. Sure. This is this is great. Yeah. Oh, look at all these pretty lights. This is it's magnificent. But where'd all the stars go? Ah. All right. Cool. Grivy. That's looking good, man. Oh, but they're going away. No. <laughs> what do we talk about? You're risking everything we achieved here. Oh, okay. My bad. Oh, Where the? You are going to stay here, aren't you? No, no. Probably not. No, especially with no nice lights. Where? The... Sounds great, but where's the nice lights? Oh, there we go. There we go. The stars. They're back. Oh, the lights. They're back. Goodbye. Goodbye, pretty lights. You heard me before, didn't you? You will die. What about this isn't getting through to you? I remember falling into developer hell. That was a really long fall. And, uh, it, you know, it, it didn't die. Who knows? Well, it's been pretty. Bye. No! Oh, thank God you lived. You had me worried there for a moment. Now, can we please get back to the other room? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, no, what are you doing, Stanley? Please, I'm asking you not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? Wait, we'll both go back? What are you... Well, man, those stairs really take a long time to go down. Stanley? Huh? Let's go back to the other room. Okay. Can you do that for me? Yes. Yeah. Perhaps you can. Perhaps you finally see what I'm talking about. I know you'll see. You'll see that we can't be happy if we leave this place. You can see that, can't you? Well, I mean, it's pretty. But there's no substance. 
Like, it sounds good, but it, there's, no, there's no substance. This, this is it. This is... It's surface layer only. It's visual. It's all pop. It's all pop pop. But no, nothing else. No. Perhaps not. No. My god. Is this really how much you dislike my game? Would no. you throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? No, you were no. You're actually willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. N Am I reading the situation correctly? N no, man, no. Man, you're, you're making me feel bad. It's just... <sighs> Here's how it is, man. Out there, it's all pretty and beautiful and, and wonderful. But there's no choice. There's no interaction. There's nothing to it. I think the developers knew that players would rather throw themselves off of a ledge over and over and over again because there was options here. This was choice. Out there, it's all fluff. You're just standing there. You're doing nothing. There's no interaction. This, it's not much, but it's interaction. And the developers knew that. Smart like that. Sorry, man. I'm the player. And you? You're just here for the ride. Well, maybe you're just that getting damn it. a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along. But I guess that was too much to ask. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, this one is yours. Yeah, man, you got it. You got it. It's all about choice. It's about choice. And Stanley chooses to not be here anymore. Is it Ow. over? It's going to restart, isn't it? I'm going back. Sorry, man. So he resets too, huh? He doesn't remember. As much as I remember, he doesn't. Just a step through this door, Stanley thought to himself. That's all I need. If I can make it through this door, I can make it through them all. No. He does remember. The end is never the end is never the end is never the end. Indeed. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. They're all on. Ah, huh, okay. Indeed. Awaiting input. Input received. I gave you input. Input was purple. I hope you like that. That was purple input. Value it. Who farted? That's what that mug says. I hate Mondays. Can't s stop hating it. It's like old Garfield the cat. With the lasagna. When Stanley <laughs> came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. It's amazing that, given a choice, with no consequences, people often go against the grain. Once consequences established, well, then there's no choice. Indeed. Ah, it's so bright, so, so bright. Yet there was not a single person what? here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Let a, how to solve a dispute with a co-worker. Let a ball up inside of you. Take it out passive-aggressively on other co-workers. Okay. Using slides to assure employees that everything's okay. Make sure your slide is a, a slick blue graphic in the header. And throw some bevel on all the text. This will ensure a calm... Everyone is unique. You, most of all. Aww. Number of slides on this slide. Charts. Charts and slides. Slides. Good. Good. Keep up the good work. I could... Rate at which charts on the same slide pick the same information. 
Oh my god, it's so marketable. I'm curious. There's a lamp in the box. I saw this and I got curious. Meeting room. Fourth Ford XX. Meeting schedule. Oh wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at Tuesday. Termination Tuesdays. Wow. Someone's getting canned that day. Ape bird. I don't know what that means. <gasps> Office party. Just in time for <laughs> Termination Tuesday. We're broke Wednesday. Oh. Majors! Targets. Push for funding for R&D of new coffee machine. Standardized graphics. Not cost efficient. Okay. Get Chris out of the broom closet. Oh. Ongoing. Okay. <gasps> synergize papers. Hire someone to synergize papers. Papers are too synergized. Fire the paper guy. Hire somebody to fire the paper guy. Paper synergizing guy. Who moved my desk? So, okay. You know what? The future was yesterday. Tomorrow is you. Is now. Future was yesterday, tomorrow is now. Uh, you know, I'm reading this whiteboard, and I gotta say, this is a this is a parody. But if you work in marketing or you've worked in an office space that is deeply corporate, and I have, uh, this feels really, really close to the real deal. Uh, go, go watch Office Space by M Mike Judge. Um, the, this is the guy that did Beavis and Butthead. Don't let that fool you. Office Space is good. But if you have ever worked in an office before, then it may as well be a documentary. Do. Synergize core value expenditures. Shift global marketing parab. Monetize free to play. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not really free. You're not doing it for free. Wasn't someone in here? It opened. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is that radioactive wire? There was nothing here. No choice to make. No path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No <laughs> reason to still be here. Funny, you understand choice now. Hey, there is a broom in this closet, though. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. I... He wasn't even doing anything. At oh. least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it yes. is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. I... There's no broom. Sorry, there's no, uh, mop. Sweet F.A., my god, man. Language! Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Do 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 You think so? Oh, it's all red. I have fire hose. Get that open. Hey, man. Let's drive on out of here. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming! 
he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then oh. he imagined himself oh. soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? Oh. And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him yeah. float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice yeah. was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this yeah. was a dream. So he Pinch closed yourself. his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. Oh. He okay. felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Am I about to wake up in my office again? Nope! It's unhinged. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. I think I just went mad. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Hello, Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in yeah. that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. Start crazy. I, I am in control of my mind. <laughs> I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. Oh. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension the rest of her life she had no time for this so it was only a moment that she stood there staring down at the body and then she turned and ran i'd say clever girl but she's locked in her own little world she too is a cog